What's up guys, Enders here with another video for you. Today we're gonna to take a look at the NAEU and Korean PC patch notes. But before we get to that, I do wanna say, if you enjoyed this video at the end of it, please like and sub to the channel if you haven't already. Every sub counts as we continue to grow. If you wanna go the extra mile and support the channel, you can click on that join button below to make a small monetary contribution to the channel and help keep us going. Every membership donation will give you some small perks and a personal thank you after every video I make. Now, as for the NAEU PC patch notes, uh, I gotta say not a lot to get through, of course. Uh, there is the removal of split damage. They finally actually specify which skills. So you no longer have split damage on the following skills. So Sinister Energy, Absolute Darkness, Mark of the Shadow, Claws of Darkness, Signs of Agony, Shield Strike, Shield Counter, Shield Push, Counter, Sharp Light, Punishment, Prime Shining Dashes, Second Hit, Glissade, and Black Spirit's Radiant Explosion. So the characters that are hit are Sorceress, Valkyrie, and Archer. And this is a good thing for those skills, but again, most of these skills are not uh, big, important skills that you'll be using a lot. So in terms of the removal of split damage, giving you more damage outright, it doesn't really make much of a difference. And uh, unfortunately, there was a bit of a miscalculation from their part just saying that removal of split damage on all skills uh, for a class meant we thought that there was, you know, that's a huge buff for a class. You can do more damage in groups overall in both PvE and PvP, but that's not the case. It's only a few skills that actually got hit uh, with this change. So in overall, removal of split damage looks good, but... Um, doesn't really do much, in my opinion, anyway. Now, the Garmouth World Boss change is a very, very good change. Uh, the fixed issue with Garmouth would go back immediately into the air after landing. That's the big one I think most of us wanted to get fixed. Uh, but because of that, now there's more density of Cocktoon mobs. Those Cocktoon mobs now have more HP. Garmouth itself has more HP as well, increased by 10%. This is actually different from the uh, the test server and then Korean live servers. So Garmouth HP was increased by 20% on that one. So they only got 10% on this one. And uh, the DP was also decreased. So it's going to be pretty, I think, easy to kill Garmouth if he's going to be on the ground that much, especially on EU. Now, in terms of everything else, nothing really crazy to talk about. We have some some events that we'll go over right now with Waki Toshi, the research event. This is the Marnie Stone event. We keep seeing uh, once a day you can hand over Marnie Stone filled with a sample to Waki Toshi to obtain five Waki Toshi seals. And one seal is going to give you about one Kron Stone. And you can hand in five if you want a 20 stack. Uh, I think 10 for a 30 and so on and so forth. I think the most is about 45 seals for a 50 stack or a choice of a box that contains 45 to 60 stacks. So it's good if you're already using Morning Stone or if you're grinding for an infinite potion, it's pretty good too. Just have that hand in every day while you're at Ronaros or Blood Wolves or something like that. Uh, you'll be able to get that done fairly quickly. Now, as for the Spring Fest events, we have Hidden Surprise during the event period, defeat monsters, gather and fish to get Matryoshka piece. And then you visit Seelis, the furniture dealer, or Velia, and complete a quest to hand over the pieces you collected for a Matryoshka. The three types of dolls, if you are lucky enough to get the smallest doll, will give you either Kafras, uh, sharps or hards as the final reward. The three different types of Matryoshka dolls can be obtained to receive either a certain amount of memory fragments or cronstones, the same Matryoshka doll or a smaller Matryoshka doll. A decent event if the drop rate is good. Uh, you can exchange the Matryoshka piece up to 15 times. So you're limited on that one. You can't just uh, grind forever or fish forever or gather forever and, and get a bunch of these uh, Kafras and memory fragments. You're limited to about 15 exchanges for the good ones. And as for the Got Milk event basically you fish up some fresh fish and you exchange it for an event nutritious pellet via creo process that pellet with a special haystack or a special chicken feed which are probably sold out by the time of this video and you can get a nutritious version so a nutritious haystack or a nutritious chicken feed and that version is going to give you three to five times a harvest than a normal special haystack that's pretty good if you want some milk or if you want some eggs for cooks and farmers and the next two events are just simply training dummies now give you 50 percent more combat xp and skill xp this is really good if you're trying to get skill points, uh, just a way to help you get more SP for that bracket that you need. If you just want to do that, or if you're going for 63, 64, you just need a little bit more help. 50% more combat XP overnight is really nice as well. The final event is a golden attendance reward event. It's just simply more money, more advice of Valks. Pretty standard stuff. Now, as for the Korean PC patch notes, uh, we have a couple interesting stuff. Uh, basically, they all got the class awakening PvE damage buffs. So the classes affected are Sorceress, Ranger, Berserker, Tamer, Musa, Mewa, Witch, Wizard, Kunoichi, Ninja, Dark Knight, Striker, Mystic, and Lan. 
Um, obviously, Archer and Shy were not touched whatsoever. Valkyrie also omitted uh, for whatever reason. But you can check out my last week's labs update for a full list of all the skills that got changed and by how much they were increased in damage. Again, this is only for PvE, although Tamer did get some changes as well that also affect its PvP in a good way. Uh, so keep that in mind. Unfortunately, we're not going to be getting this next week, even though we should have. There is no maintenance for NAEU next week. That means we're basically going to have to wait another week, so two weeks until we get the PvE damage buffs, which is a bit of a bummer. There's also contribution rental armor added in Korea for 50 CP apiece. I looked at the stats for each one, so main weapon is going to give you 112 sheet AP, 188 accuracy, and 18 all species damage and 8 monster damage. The awakening weapon is 114 AP and 9 all species damage. The offhand is 27 AP, 16 DP, 11 accuracy, and 50 monster damage that seems pretty decent actually for um, a rental piece not too bad at all and the armor at least the, the body piece is 81 dp its evasion is only 37 and dr 44 there wasn't any hidden uh, dr hidden evasion modifiers on the codex but it could still be in the game it just doesn't show me uh, they also have 300 health 100 mana and 25 lt so it's a much better tri dim tree than, uh, than what you get from suppressed armor. So it's not too bad, actually. If you have 50 CP lying around, uh, that's not a bad armor to actually get. And the rest of the pieces are pretty decent as well for the armors. Now, there's another uh, proddy cavern change. Uh, not, not many people grind this area, but there's now a new mob called Perodia Seed. And the Proteus Seed is a new mob that's going to evolve throughout different phases before dying. And the larger phases, it's going to drop more loot than normal. It will kind of try and hide uh, within mobs so it runs away from you. You just kill it over and over again and it just grows and grows and grows until the final form where you kill it and you get uh, a bunch more loot. That's pretty much the entirety of that change. The Inverted Garments Heart questline was added. I made a video recently about this. So you can check that out. Uh, for the entire rundown of the entire quest line you need to do nothing's changed from what i can see from the test server quest line so everything that that video is pretty accurate um, it's going to cost around six billion silver to complete the quest line plus of course the added uh, time that you need to gather the materials overall for us in the naeu this is not worth it right now you just grind five bill and you buy a garment's heart right now but you need to understand that in korea prices are different so maybe they're tuning this quest line for Korean prices. And as far as I know, I don't play in Korea, but it's from what I hear, Garments Heart are in high demand. So this is a way for you to get that until you eventually are able to get an order for a Garments Heart or maybe get it from a straight drop because there are in the files, although not in the patch notes, Garments Summons. So Garments would now be a guild summon as well that you can summon and then possibly get a garments heart that way as well we don't know when that's going to go live that it's in the files right now but probably my guess is next week they're going to introduce that to to the game if they haven't already if they haven't uh, just missed it in the patch notes or i missed it in the patch notes now of course the island exploration from sailing has been updated so you can now receive better rewards from island repeatable quests Exploring islands would now yield repeatable quests that offer crow coins and carrick materials as rewards. Whereas before, the only rewards you really got from those were CPXP. It's a much better reward to get crow coins and carrick materials. So that's a great change for sailors that hop islands. And there is also the change for precision cannon fire. That's been changed now. So now uh, when you press Q or E, you can go into the side view and you have a little red reticle. Now it's going to be changed to a parabola. That's kind of like the normal uh, parabola you see when you a normal left click or right click fire so now you see that so you can see the curvature of the cannon fire a little bit better so you're not maybe in heavy heavy seas you're not hitting the water instead of actually your target that's a good change i think we'll see how it works in in practice and that's pretty much it for this one guys let me know what you thought about these changes in the comments down below are you excited for the pve damage buffs that will eventually come what do you think about those cp rentals they don't look too bad to me and the inverted garments quest line i know a lot of you have a strong opinion about this one but let me know if you think it's more geared towards korean prices or maybe you think it's going to be tweaked by the time we get it of course remember it needs odolita main story we don't even have odolita uh we probably at the earliest will get odolita in the summer so keep that in mind as always guys thanks for watching thanks for listening i'll see you all in the next one take care